Hey guys, what's going on? Dracker plays here, and we're gonna take a look at the fourth installment of the Trine series. So stick around. The Nightmare Prince is the fourth installment of the Trine series and still features our three heroes Amadeus the Wizard, Zoya the Thief, and our lovable Pontius the Knight. If you're not familiar with the series, Trine is a side-scrolling 2.5D platformer and puzzle game developed by Frozenbyte and published by Modus Games. The first ever Trine game was released for the PlayStation 3 and Windows last 2009. Trine 2 was released 2011 and Trine 3, which was a completely different style than the previous games, was released last 2015. Trine 4 brings you back to its roots going back to a 2.5D environment. The game features the same elements as Trine 1 and Trine 2 and puts you in control of a wizard who is able to conjure objects, a thief who uses a bow and arrow, and a knight who wields a sword and shield. The fourth installment is titled The Nightmare Prince, which focuses on our heroes trying to save Prince Celius from a demise that haunts him. The story tells us of how Prince Celius exposes himself to dark magic which causes his nightmares to come to life. In solo mode, you can switch to all three heroes one at a time, all the time for whatever each situation offers. In multiplayer mode, up to four players can join and take the role of one of each hero. Trine 4 was released for the PlayStation 4, Windows, Xbox One, and for the Nintendo Switch. It has a straightforward progression, and with every stage cleared, rewards you with skill upgrades, though optional, it can help you progress the game much more easier. The skill tree is divided into three, which corresponds to your three heroes, and with each upgrade, it is viable and offers an upgraded version of the current skills that you have. For example, now Amadeus can conjure two objects at the same time instead of one, or how Zoya's arrows are now elemental, or how Pontius' stump causes enemies to freeze. All of which are great improvements in comparison to trying to use skill progression. The game itself directs you to a puzzle, which of course is solved by using at least two of your heroes. The downside, the puzzle seems to be a bit repetitive with every stage you proceed to, and the difficulty does not scale as you progress. You are left with puzzles that seem too easy to solve, and a too straightforward game progression, especially if you're playing solo mode. The story can be done in 9 to 11 hours, with the exception of course if you're playing a multiplayer mode, in which how Trine 4 should be played. Venture through their magical fairy tale land and vanquish your foes. Listen to wonderful soundtracks while solving puzzles, and enjoy the company of our three heroes as you go along the way of finding the prince. Experiment different solutions when playing in multiplayer mode because the game actually lets you solve the puzzles in free form or by yourself. Trine 4 The Nightmare Prince has so far redeemed itself in spite of what happened with Trine 3, which was very ambitious in its own way. The boss fights are medium due to lack of creativity, but I expect no less from a 2.5D game since you're only limited to 2.5D. Nonetheless, the game has truly proven itself worthy and it can get addictive, especially when playing in co-op. Aesthetics are simply amazing for a 2.5D game, and Trine does not disappoint. The graphics in general are too good to be true, with emphasis on the 2.5D background which just leaves you in awe. Overall, Dracker Plays scores Trine 4, The Nightmare Prince, an 8, and is a must-have if you love platform and puzzle games. So this has been Dracker Plays, and if you liked this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe to get future updates. And as usual, see you in our next video.